it's time to jump into the Ice Dungeon, the Temple of Droplets. You know how, for pretty much all of the game, we've had mostly just compliments, like, the game has been very light on bad design decisions, is what I want to say. Well, I got to this level and I realized, oh, they saved all of them for this dungeon. Yeah. I don't hate ice physics as a rule, but there's just so many obnoxious parts to this. Yeah, I think we're going to be the odd couple here. You're going to hate it, and I'm going to try and apologize for it, because <laughs> I actually like this dungeon. No, that's fine. It's just I hated playing through it. Yeah, it's. It, it, I'll give you that. It's, it's difficult to play through. The ice physics are a little it's just dumb. I'm just a sucker for icy aesthetic. Like, I just love it. I liked the ice dungeon in Link to the Past, even though it had the same problems. But I don't know. It's just the chill music. It's, it's cool. I like it. And it's got a whole, like, fire and dice vibe going on. A little bit, yeah. Welcome to these switches, by the way. Sometimes they're a little janky to push with the Game Boy. I'm gonna look straight up at it! <laughs> Don't look- you know what? Actually, yeah, please, look directly at the sun. So that just opened up the floor, essentially. So both we can drop down from there, but also we can use the sunlight to melt that key. Yeah, the game is teaching you something that you're going to have to use in this dungeon a few times. Also, get ready to practice your block pushing while sliding around skills. One of the mechanics, I know. Mm-hmm. A cool thing this game does, and I like, um, and I know you mentioned it earlier when we were above one of the shops, you get a, like a, a picture of what's below you. Yeah. Scrolling when you have a hole in the floor, it's just kind of a cool, it's a neat effect. It gives you a little bit more of that feeling like it's an actual 3D world you're in. You know, as opposed to the black void you got in the other pocket games. And now this time it's teaching us that we can also reclose that latch. And also, we immediately get the boss key. This is one thing I like about Minish Cap, is it's not 100% linear in the same ways that all the other Zeldas are. We don't always get the map, and then the compass, and then the key. Sometimes they switch it up. In this case, we get the key first, and then we have the entire rest of the dungeon once we open the boss door. It's a little funky. Right. Also, the other dungeons have been kind of easy. This one really starts to get difficult with the puzzles. You have to really think about where you're placing blocks and, and all kinds of things. It's That might be another reason I like this dungeon, because I'm a big fan of the puzzle parts of Zelda. Of course, if you just want to go bomb some Dodongos, I get, I get that part of it too. Yay, let's go fight the boss. We're done. Yeah, just like we should be able to, but... Yeah, unfortunately, actually activating the boss in this dungeon is very different, and, I don't know, I think kind of cool. It's like most of the dungeon isn't getting to the boss, it's being able to fight the boss. Right, and we'll see what that means pretty shortly, actually. Yeah. Ezo catches fire. <laughs> hey! Oh, they don't break on each other. Yeah, no friendly fire on the pots. I was a little weirded out by that, playing through it. Now the reason why... Which I think we're just about to see. <laughs> you don't have to say anything, because Ezlo's gonna say it all. Yeah, why do I even bother? We're going to get Ezla on Discord next time. Hey! Okay, immediately mute him, too. <laughs> so yeah, the element's right there. We just got to free it from the ice, and there's also an Octorok. Looks giant, because we are Minish-sized right now. Yeah, same with the Choo-Choo from earlier. Mm -hmm. 
So, the map was immediately below me, but I went north and I completely missed it for most of the dungeon. Oh, yeah. That's why I hate this dungeon. Oh, yeah. It's not the ice physics, it's that the <laughs> lily pad comes back, and this is where it really becomes a bad idea. Yeah, there's a lot of lily padding in this dungeon, too. Lily padding, you say? Yeah, they really padded this one. If you catch my drift, the drift of the lily pad. Lily. I'm really stretching here. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. We. <laughs> he swam down that. Link is dead now. Or Gungle's dead now. I like to think that you brush just far enough underneath of that spiky log to scratch as low as you go underneath of it. Higher! <laughs> Ooh, that's an oddly shaped room. It's shaped like a pot. One, there it is. It's a key at the bottom of it. Not so much the bottom of the water, but the bottom of the shape of the pot. Mm -hmm. I want to say there's a hint somewhere that tells you that. I don't recall. Ugh. Oh, yeah, okay. This part takes a long time. What if one of your upgrades was an outboard motor? <laughs> just gives a gust jar a tongue. Blah, 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 blah. You just lean Ezlo in the water and he spins his beak around really fast. <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea to scout where you're going before hopping on the pad again. Yeah. Thankfully, when you leave the screen, the lily pad stays where you left it. However, there's sort of a bug with that. Mm hmm. This room's especially obnoxious because you need to step on those switches every time you come in here. Unless you do one specific thing, I think once you've made it through to the end of the room. Like, it like triggers a flag or something. Yeah. The best part about this dungeon is that all the other enemies ignore the ice physics. <laughs> yeah. Which is interesting. A lot of the enemies in the ice dungeon from Link to the Past actually did slide around, but it was mainly just the penguins that would actually use that to their advantage. Why are there dung beetles in here? What's going on? <laughs> And why do they fly? That's even more terrifying. It's the same with the pea hats. There's a variation of the flies that also drop stuff on you. <laughs> you got 50 rupees, throw it in the trash. I don't think I realized that my wallet was maxed out. And there's more of that ice. Hmm. Sort of like you mentioned, it does look like fire is going to be our item. There's the bug. If the lily pad is moving, it completely resets. Welcome to hell. Yeah, so I had to go all the way back up to get the lily pad, and then come back down here and redo all of those switches, and that was the point where I realized I hated this dungeon. <laughs> yeah. I won't apologize for the lily pad, that's just, it's broken. It wouldn't be so bad if it actually did stay where you left it, but, you know. It does as long as it's standing still. If it's moving, then it resets. And also, this is just slow. Yeah. <laughs> Let's leave him here in this dark room. <laughs> All alone. If only I still had nerve endings. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like the slugs, as ineffectual as they are. 
Yeah, it's kind of a cool, it's it's an environmental thing, and it's also like it's just a neat little slow enemy. Why are you healing yourself? You should be using the Peril Beam. <laughs> Can you handle three projectiles? When only one's going at a time? Right, yeah, if you separate them, they'll kind of leave you alone until you get close. Which is nice. You're not strong enough. I'm surprised Ezlo didn't say anything about it. <laughs> like, he points out really obvious dumb shit, but when there's actually a puzzling thing that might make you think about it, he won't say anything. Not that I'm asking for him to say more, no. mind you, <laughs> but I just want to make that observation. There's a logistical problem here. Yeah. It's a little weird. We go in one side, we come out on the other side. Which then lights that side so we can go on that side and come out the other side. Right. Now he says something. That only opened one side of the ceiling, I guess. Mm-hmm. So we gotta open the other side. That will release the element and presumably that Octorok as well. I don't, you think anyone would catch that? It sort of occurred to- this looks like a bad idea. Yeah. But we need the element. Yeah, I guess we don't have another option. Well, we could chip away at the giant ice block with our sword and maybe get the element in about 30 years. Or maybe we could grow big again and just drive our sword into the dungeon. That, well, true. Yeah, just reach in and grab it because it's in a little ice cube. <laughs> Melt it in your mouth. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, slow traps. They're actually more annoying than they look here in this little icy room. Yeah. If you bump into them, they start actually pushing you around. Like that. <laughs> Thanks for demonstrating. And once again, because it's an icy floor, you don't reset on the floor. You reset at the entrance. That was one of the more obnoxious things that feels like the 3D Zeldas do that more often. Like if you fall in the lava. Yeah. But the 2D Zeldas, including Minish Cap, wasn't doing that until this level. It's got to be something with the mechanics of actually placing you back on the slippery surface. It's to reset your momentum or something. I don't know. I'm not a programmer. It sounds right. So, yeah, sounds great. I'm going to, it's, there you go. I'm going <laughs> to edit the Wikipedia page right now. Getting lined up to push a switch is actually pretty difficult on the ice, too. Hmm. So the floor above us, that was open, but there still wasn't light. So we have to close that door to open the door above us and then go back down. Multi-level puzzling. I don't mind this dungeon in theory. It's just a drag to go through. Yeah, I'll give it that. Also, I just noticed Gunkle doesn't do the lifting over the head very much unless he has nothing in his hands. Like, right. when he gets the key, he just holds it and looks at it. When you get an increase to your charge beam or whatever, he does a fist pump. Very excited. Oh boy, do you remember that one boss you fought? This one's a little trickier. Remember me! It's an electric chew now. Oh god. Are we, are we prepared? And he'll start off jumping. To, oh wow, he's got you in the corner. Good. Problem with the gust jar, you can't roll away while you're using it. Yeah. I'm gonna fall on you. But it's the same deal. He's taking his time. Any day now. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Come on. I guess you can't suck it in while he's electric. Yeah, it doesn't work.
Because if that's one thing electricity can do. Right. My chin. <laughs> Okay, that's because he missed me. This reminds me, I hear there's going to be another Luigi's Mansion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Please watch all of Thor and Brave's LPs for your latest gaming news. <laughs> None of which include Luigi's Mansion. There's our dungeon item, the Flame Lantern. It's basically just a lantern, except sometimes if you rub up against enemies, they catch fire. The cool thing here is that it doesn't have any fuel. Yeah. Kind of nice not to have to worry about that. And it stays out for pretty much the whole screen. Yeah, that's useful for dark rooms. It kind of subverted my expectations, because that's the sort of item they usually give you pretty early in the game. Yeah. In other Zelda titles. And it doesn't have that much utility. Yeah. It's a relatively weak utility item, but here it's actually pretty useful. Not every enemy can be lit by the lantern, sadly. Right. But I, I guess these guys have, like, a carapace. I imagine that's not flammable. Yeah. Watch the back swing. There we go. <laughs> so I didn't need to actually do that, but that is good practice. There are some torch puzzles that are timed. Still not doing the roll attack. Yeah. It is hard to time that, I get it. Anytime I do it, it's completely on accident. Like, I forget that I have it. Yeah. You should be reading your tiger scrolls every day. All five that you have. Those guys crack me up, I just don't understand them. Yeah, it's it's kind of... They're kind of cute. They're engaging. They're just like... They freak out. Oh my god, he's here! Go, go, can I get your auto rifle up? <laughs> oh, I saw that wall. Just a bunch of these guys. Oh, yeah. You found the party room. This is the police. Break it up. This room wasn't a reward at all. Okay. You needed to be here. Yeah. So, good catch. Murder is its own reward. Yeah. So we think the lantern doesn't need fuel because we're burning Ezlo's fibers slowly. <laughs> I'm getting skinnier. <laughs> Don't mind that. Finally, I've got the beach bot I've always wanted. <laughs> oh, this is a fun room. Here's another bad design decision. We've talked about it a little bit, but when you catch fire, you have no real control over yourself. You can still move around but you can't use any of your weapons. You just run straight forward, and you don't stop until the fire goes out. It's extremely obnoxious. I don't like it. And no, you can't use a boomerang on them. I thought they might be a bubble or something. You just need to get out of here. Yeah, I'm trying. 
Also, you can't leave while you're on fire. Yeah, for some reason, it's supposed to be transition screens. Hey, you're almost ready to use the peril beam, though. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I do not have the faith in my abilities to use that. <laughs> it's okay, you'll probably get the real beam soon enough. I hear myself picking up rupees that I can't use. Just feeding them to Ezlo. Wait a minute. Gotta do it piece by piece. And I gotta just deal with blocking off the entrance at first. Now you get the right idea. Oh, I almost killed my double. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Do you think Ezlo talks to his hat double? <laughs> Doesn't it suck when he doesn't respond? This one's a little tricky. You gotta push that first ice block. Because that opens up the path. You'll notice we're able to make more doubles here. Mm-hmm. But we gotta clear up the path so that we can walk around without our double walking into any ice blocks or any walls. And also we gotta push that ice block forward so that it sits on a switch. Because there's only two of us. Nope. Nope, gotta go around. Yeah, they made it as difficult as possible. Oh, boy. And now you're timed. Smack into the block. Right, the thing to remember is that your actual real gunkle is okay to smack into the walls, so use that to your advantage if you can. Almost look like the blocks was in the shape of a man having a party. <laughs> Lantern can burn the ice, so now we no longer need any light, except for the one in the main room. Aw, no light arrows. Can't just sit there and hold the lantern up to the ice block like you can in Breath of the Wild. Oh, right. I think that's just there so you can go back through the room. Ah. Now here's the timing puzzle. It sucks too because you're on the ice. <laughs> Good job. Could have used a fire rod instead, maybe. Probably would have been more fun. Yeah. Get in the water. Yeah. Unfortunately, you don't get any drops from them, though. Mm-hmm. But this is a good chance to show up the Lon Lon milk. Doesn't heal too much, but it is nice, and you do get two servings. feeling that they're pointing something out to you that you can clearly see anyway. Yeah. That arrow has a belt. And it's these guys again. Oh, there's a cobweb in front of me. Well, I can't pull it out with the gust jar when I'm behind the cobweb. But I can use a lantern on it. You don't need the gust jar for those anymore. You need to be right in the middle of the cobweb and pointing the lantern directly at it. And of course, me being anal retentive, that means I've got to burn all of the cobwebs now, even though I don't need to, actually. Right. It is helpful, though, to get rid of them. They're laughing at you.
I also find this room obnoxious. Alright. God damn it. I only got one of them. Way less obnoxious than fighting those worm enemies in uh, in Skyward Sword. That's what I was thinking. Oh yeah, those sucked. The underground. Ugh. Similar concept. Way easier here. Yay. There it is. Nope, gotta go on the other side without killing my double. <laughs> Push, don't pull. There we go. That melts away the ice so we can get the element. Quick, grab it. However, the Octorok is also in the sunlight throw Ezlo on top of it. Catch it first! Yeah, hold it for me! It's just his snout and his front legs. What a jerk. <laughs> but I guess technically we did open the boss room. Well, let's go kill it. Or not. Well, no, I got the lantern. I gotta go back and get all the other stuff. And also the map that I missed. Obviously, we need the map. I had completely bypass this area. Again, I don't need to burn these. Just feels like I do. This is probably much more obnoxious before you get the lantern. Yeah. At least they only give you one here. Must burn them all. <laughs> It'd be nicer if the lantern had more of an area of effect. Right. Make it easier to kill him. And also the compass, I can believe the mist. Oh boy. Not that they would have helped. Nah. Ooh, there you go. With your current probability, that'll give you, well, like a 30% chance of getting one now. I'm joking. <laughs> it's a 40% chance. No, 100 is a guarantee. Yeah, oh, yeah. Nope, not close enough. You couldn't make the jump. Come on, Gunkle. Now let's fight the boss. He's got a little flower growing on his butt. <laughs> Move! There we go. <laughs> so the Octorok is not very easy to fight. If only because how you fight him is not telegraphed or taught to you in any way at all. Yeah. He's spitting out all of these rocks. Some of them are bouncing off the walls and back into him. That was my clue that, oh, those rocks I should just avoid and maybe I should do the Dodongo thing and throw a bomb into his mouth. Nope. Nah. What you need to do is hit the rocks back at him. Because even though they occasionally go back to him normally, they don't go back fast enough. What that does is freeze him over. That makes sense. Now he's going to spin around and try to suck you in, which makes getting behind him very difficult. But you use the lantern to burn his flower. 
I also don't like this boss. Yeah, it's kind of a hard boss to fight. The problem is whenever he hits you, like he sucks you in or he freezes you, that douses the lantern. And when you light the lantern, that little half second of you lighting it is time you're wasting trying to get around him. Mm-hmm. So I thought, that does help though, using the Pegasus boots. There you go. Oh my god, I'm dying! Why did I cover myself in frozen gasoline? And repeat. And repeat. No, can't light him now. Zelda has taught me I should totally be able to throw bombs into his mouth, especially when he's sucking in, but no. I know. The urge is just there. Pretty sure that's what I did the first time, too. It's, please work. <laughs> it's probably pretty obvious, but this is my first time fighting him. You mean this isn't a seasoned practiced run? No. You're not doing too bad, though. For the first time. That's because I edited the video. Oh, right. <laughs> what you're not noticing is the thousands of perfectly cut pieces all stitched together here. Oh, come on. <laughs> you passed over too fast, I guess? I don't know. It's only flammable once he lets you. And also, my lantern isn't lit. Uh-oh. It would really suck if running fast actually put your lantern out. Oh. And also, you can run into his mouth. Obviously, he's not hungry. He's spitting you out. Yay! His dying screams. Come on. This is a really long boss. Yeah. When you see this video is about 35 minutes long, you've only done one dungeon. Oh no, can you do it in the dark? Welcome to the final phase. He's just going nuts and hitting the walls. Yeah. It's not really... I mean, I know that they're going for that gimmick. It doesn't really add much to the difficulty of the fight, I think. It just pads it out. And this is a boss that did not need padding. No. Absolutely not. There we go. Yay, at least we don't have to go through another ice part. So man, those Octorex you can kill in like one sword hit. If you're tiny, that's how much you have to do to kill it. Well, you're essentially stabbing it with a teeny tiny needle. Just imagine. Needles make you bleed. I mean, not enough to die. Oh well. We got the water element. Yay! That's our third element. It should have been our fourth, but the sky people went and fucked off with the wind element, so we still gotta find that. It's an excuse to add another dungeon to the game. There weren't that many dungeons, so it should need reasons to have more. Oh, right, that's right. We teleport out. It's like, how do I get out of here? <laughs> we fly. Yay! Hey, that was some shit! Wouldn't that have been nice? What? Bear. Oh, help me. Gustav Mahler. I have composed <laughs> once more beyond the grave. <laughs> I 
Did you see that? So that's pretty cool. So that's an ancient king of Hyrule. Mm-hmm. But next time, alongside a little bit of collection, we're going to put the element into the sword, and then we're going to head straight to where King Gustav is buried. And we've got an undead adventure next time. In the very un undead titled location of the Royal Valley.